So you found starting strength and you want to you want to do a novice linear progression or you want to just get strong and you want the results that comes along with getting strong. And this is where you're going to start with a novice linear progression. And no matter if you have previous lifting experience or you've never lifted before in your entire life, this is where you're going to start. And the foundation of the novice linear progression is in the stress recovery adaptation cycle. So whenever a stress is applied to an organism, it will drop their condition uh, below baseline and they will need to recover in order to bring it up to baseline and then they will adapt to um, take their conditions above baseline, which means that they get stronger, they can produce more force, they're more resistant. And then that cycle continues and up and up and up the baseline goes until um, there's a much larger difference in terms of strength and resilience than there was in the beginning of the program. And this also takes advantage, the stress recovery adaptation cycle takes advantage of the novice effect, which means that a organism can adapt and humans can adapt to stress in the time frame of 24 to 72 hours. Um, and that means that um, we can add weight and increase the amount of stress, which is the amount of weight on the bar or reps or sets in order to uh, drive progress and add a lot of weight to the bar in a short amount of time. And that is what the two foundational principles upon which the novice linear progression is founded. And that is what, um, that is what underlies the program. So the novice linear progression starts out first as you're going to come in day one, you're going to squat three sets of five, press three sets of five, and deadlift a single set of five. And so what's going to happen is the reason why we deadlift one set of five is because we do not need to deadlift two or three sets of five because the deadlift is um, very stressful. And if you do a lot of volume, it becomes difficult to recover from in um, two days or three days, as opposed to just doing a single set. And then the next day, you're gonna squat three sets of five, bench, um, which that's the main difference between day A and day B. You're gonna bench three sets of five and deadlift a single set of five. So you're gonna squat and deadlift every day, adding five pounds until that doesn't work. And you're gonna alternate the press and the bench every day, adding five pounds between each workout to each of the lifts until that doesn't work. And so let's say you've run that out for a month, two, uh, three maybe. Um, and you see, you need to start making modifications to the workouts. Um, what's gonna be the first thing to need modified is gonna be the squat. So you're gonna come in, let's say you're in a squat, um, I don't know, 275 for three sets of five. Um, it looked a lot slower than last workout and you've been doing everything right. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a light day, which is gonna be two sets of five at about 80%. So that's gonna be at 225. Um, and this, doing this extends the amount of time between weight increases, which gives the lifter more time to recover. Um, and the addition of a light squat day gives the lifter a break, a psychological break, as well as a physical break from lifting heavy and gives them um, enough stress in the meantime to not detrain or get weaker and to maintain their, um, their adaptations. And so you're going along, keep, keep adding weight, keep adding weight. And maybe the deadlift, um, the next modification that's going to be needed is going to be the deadlift. So let's say you come in, you deadlift uh, 300, and you know you keep adding weight, and it just it feels really bad, or you're starting to encounter issues. And maybe you need, and we're going to add a light pull to the deadlift. So you're going to come in, you're going to power clean, and you're going to do. five sets of three. Um, and we'll come in, we'll teach you, and this will give you a break as well. And the same thing as the squat, it'll lengthen the amount of time between weight increases and give the lifter more time and a bit of a deload in terms of psychologically, um, so they aren't just lifting heavy all the time. And if you can't power clean, then we'll probably deadlift, um, do a light deadlift, two sets of five. So if you're deadlifting 300, uh, maybe like 245, for two sets of five, um, I would write times two, but I ran out of space. And so that's gonna be the second modification that you're gonna need to make to linear progression. 
and probably next you're going to encounter something in the press which the modification is probably going to be first going from um, five pound jumps to 2.5 to maybe even one and a quarter and once you exhaust those for three sets of five then something needs to change so what's going to happen um what a good a modification that we'll make is we might just have the lifter come in and do a single set of five and then the next time they press we'll do four sets of five for a volume day um, to get the enough stress to drive the press um, because oftentimes once you switch from five pounds to two and a half pounds that means that you cannot um, you need to make smaller jumps in the press as opposed to larger jumps because you cannot you cannot handle that weight increase um, as readily because maybe you can lift 120 and maybe you can lift 125 but you can't do 130 so how do you get from 125 to 130 you have to do you know 127 and a half or 126 and a quarter to get there and that's how that works is you need to take smaller jumps in the press and maybe after that um the squat's probably getting heavier let's say you're at don't mind my bad racing skills let's say you're at um let's call it uh 315 and squat's getting really heavy and um what you need is you're going to need to extend the stress recovery adaptation even more the stress recovery adaptation cycle even more and what's going to happen is you're either going to have to do um you can probably do back offs so you do 315 for one set of five and then you do um probably 305 for two sets of five or you can continue to do 315 for 315 and i wait on one day a week do a light day on another day of the week and then do a volume day which is probably three sets of five at about 275 275 or 290 roughly in order to get enough stress but also not um, fatigue and um, the lifter unnecessarily so that they can get this um, and that at that point the lifter is on intermediate programming for the squat and any more modifications after that then that is the end of the novice linear progression for the squat and Typically, the bench does not need modification for most lifters. Um, I mean, we might need to switch from five pound to two and a half pound jumps on the bench, but typically the bench does not stall out or does not encounter problems until much later on, unlike the squat, press, and deadlift. Um, and so the deadlift, um, what's gonna need to happen eventually is it's gonna become too stressful to deadlift two times or uh, two times a week. And so we're gonna take the lifter to deadlifting from two times a week to one time a week by adding um, chin-ups or another light pull variation. Maybe they're doing power cleaning twice, but maybe they just need more stress. So we'll have them deadlift, um, do light two sets of five or three sets of five, power clean, and then they'll heavy pull. And at that point, that is the end of the novice linear progression for the deadlift. And at that point, they are on intermediate programming for the deadlift. And after that, probably going to encounter something with the bench, and that's going to be um, lifters probably can, they can do let's say um, you know 185 for three sets of five, and they come in they try to do 187 and a half. First set goes well, second set goes a little worse, third set is looking all noticeably slower. And what we do for that is let's say the, the lifter comes in, they do. 190 for a set of five, and then we'll have them do 175 for two sets of five, um, which is back offs. And this typically tends to work really well for the upper body lifts um, rather than the lower body lifts. And well, it, this works well for all of them, but it works really well for the bench because it allows you to get enough, enough stress or some stress while also attaining the PR and moving and making more progress across time and adding more weight to the bar. And at that point, 
after this, it's probably the bench is going to be need to be switched when it needs the next modification to intermediate programming because that means that the lifter is not getting enough stress, and um, that means that they're going to need a volume day, and then they're going to have to do an intensity day, which is a new PR. And at that point, um, once all those modifications have been made, the novice linear progression is officially over, and the lifter is now transitioned to intermediate programming. And this is a result of they are not able to recover in uh, 24 to 72 hours from the previous workout and make progress in either um, between every workout or every other workout. And now they are they make progress about once a week. And that is the end of the linear progression. And that is typically how a novice linear progression goes for most lifters um, who start the program and are. Um, if they need to eat, if they need to eat and uh, put on weight, um, that's how it goes. If they want to lose weight, that's how that goes. And if you have a lifting experience or not, that's typically how it goes for most people. And thank you for watching.